Welcome to Digital Asset News, the top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets, and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, it's all about mass adoption and institutions. So first up, Square's Cash App Bitcoin revenue surges 600% to 875 million in Q2, profit is up massively. And this is gonna lead us into our next article, which talks about PayPal and how they will also be getting cryptocurrency. Also, there's a new billion dollar company investing in Bitcoin. How amazing is that? It's because institutions are finally coming in because there's so much going on with our space, which will lead us to our last article. And I think one of the big stories of the day is that Bitcoin is set for a bull run that will dust NASDAQ as Ethereum, XRP, and other altcoins face an uphill battle, which is stated by a Bloomberg forecast, which is very highly detailed, which will go over the cliff notes, but it's all really coming together. And finally, this is day three of our $100 Ethereum giveaway. So stay for the end and we'll be giving away $100 worth of Ethereum at the very end. But first, let's take a look at the market. So uh, it is August uh, b -b -b 7th, around 1220 Texas time, and uh, a little bit of a pullback, which is healthy. I am glad to see this because I got to tell you, when things go up too fast, uh, too quickly, it just uh, it just uh, doesn't really set well with me. So Bitcoin uh, down 3%, now at a, at a paltry 11.4%. That's not so bad. Ethereum 371, uh, I thought it was going to top out at 400, but here we are. So a little bit of pullback. I'm okay. XRP, 28 cents. Watch out. Tether's Tether, Bitcoin Cash, sure. Cardano, uh, down pretty big, 6%. Now it's at 13 cents. Bitcoin SV, again, Litecoin, Chainlink, everything's down, 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 down. Ooh, what's this? 10% for Tezos. Ugh. What are you going to do? So uh, that's cryptocurrency. Now I got to tell you, uh, if you're in the traditional market and you're and you're just coming in, welcome. Uh, this is a normal day. Uh, some people call this a massive drop off. We call this a Friday. So uh, if you are just coming in, hold on to your seat because it's about to get bumpy. All right. Before we get into today's uh, big stories, I need to go over something from yesterday, and I just wanted to uh, make a quick correction because everybody had told me some information I wasn't aware of. So this is a story we did yesterday, and uh, this is Scott Melker. He's known as the Wolf of All Streets on Twitter, a pretty prolific trader. He talks about how he fell victim to a SIM swap attack. And basically what he says is he doesn't use uh, text message to factor authentication. What he uses is the uh, Google 2FA, which is an app that you can download on your phone. And what he does is he keeps it on another device. And uh, he says, you know, he keeps it offline. So um, for the Google 2FA, usually it's only available for um, mobile devices. And when I tried to download it on my MacBook, it uh, was not available in the uh, App Store. But from what a lot of people have told me, they have downloaded it on their tablet. So if you have a tablet, this is probably an easier way to store your Google 2FA. And uh, I will link uh, this uh, video uh, from yesterday in the uh, uh, final part of this video today so you can take a look at it. But basically what it is is we're going to use the uh, Google 2FA. You can have it on your phone or you can have it on your tablet. Uh, I don't think you can use it on your computer unless you download some specialty uh, types of apps, but I'm not into that. And that was it. So thanks everybody who uh, let me know about that. That is fantastic information. Let's get into today's stories. So first up, Square's Cash App uh, has a massive revenue, uh, which is uh, not surprising. So what's going on? So Square released its performance report, uh, Q2 2020, uh, on Tuesday, and the company's net revenue, uh, including Bitcoin revenue, was $1.92 billion. So hey, good for them, making some money, which is an increase of 64% year over year. Now the Cash App, Square's popular payment service, achieved a gross profit of $281 million up 167% from last year. So it looks like uh, even in the down market, uh, what's going on with the economy, I would say, uh, they are still doing pretty well. So uh, congratulations to uh, Jack Dorsey, uh, Twitter founder and also founder of Square. Looks like he's not doing too bad. But here's where it gets interesting for us. It says here, excluding Bitcoin, excluding Bitcoin, Cash App's revenue for Q2 2020 was 325 million. Uh, that's up 140%. But in the second quarter last year, the app generated Bitcoin revenue of 125 million. Analyst Kevin Roke pointed out in a tweet that Square's second quarter Bitcoin revenue was almost 3x the volume of Q1 2020. So imagine that uh, you are a company and you just do normal payments, right? And all of a sudden, they, you know, you have a great idea, you know, we should just offer Bitcoin because maybe people might want to buy that. And Jack Dorsey is a huge believer into it. And they go, oh, yeah, sure, whatever. You know, we'll see how it goes. And then you double, triple, quadruple your profits. Uh, that's not too uh, shabby of a um, 
uh, resolution. So if you take a look like this, square Bitcoin revenue by quarter, um, Bitcoin is accounting for a huge chunk of their revenue. So of course they make money on the payments and uh, all those different things they're doing, but the big thing is Bitcoin. So if they didn't have Bitcoin, half their revenue is gone. Well, maybe not half, somewhere between uh, a third and a half, but it's a lot of money. I mean, we're gonna take a look at the chart here. I mean, it really doesn't matter percentage wise. I mean, if you're making almost a billion dollars, look, we're at 800 million here. This is Q2 220. 2020 <laughs> and uh, we're almost hitting a billion and it just keeps going up like this um, I think other types of payment processors would look at this and be like hmm maybe we should get on this because all we got to do is just offer this cryptocurrency we may not believe in it that might not be our core value but we need to listen to what the consumer wants and apparently they want a lot of this thing called Bitcoin and that is why I truly believe that uh, PayPal uh, is going to get in the game now there's been rumors going around that paypal is going to get into cryptocurrency which would be fantastic uh, because they have a ton of users just like the cash so i mean if you have the cash app you have paypal let's say some other type of like uh like a venmo gets into something like this as well i mean it's just sky's the limit so i just don't see why paypal would be like you know what we don't want an extra billion dollars um uh, our core principle is just uh fiat and that's all we're going to do so pff, that's it no uh, they're a company. They have to appease their shareholders. So you better believe when I'm talking about cryptocurrency and it actually happening, it's going to happen. Do I know when? I have no idea when. But as a business, I can tell you right now, they're going to go for it. So speaking of mass adoption, let's take a look at the next article, which is talking about a billion dollar company is investing in Bitcoin. This is just one more of these institutional investors coming into the fray. So what's going on here? So on a recent earnings call, the billion dollar company MicroStrategy, said that they were sitting on a $500 million cash reserve. That's always nice when that happens. But Chairman and CEO Michael Saylor said he doesn't think it's too smart to hold on to that much cash long term. And I got to tell you, that's, um, that's kind of a... A, a different viewpoint uh, than some people do. A lot, some people, uh, as far as investors go, they think cash is king. And I got to tell you, in, in certain ways, I do too, because I know that the dollar is weakening and there's different problems there, but uh, as push comes to shove, regular cash is important to have on, on hand. It just is, because you can do a lot of things with it. So, but if these guys are like, you know what? We see the writing on the wall. We see the quantitative easing. We see the weakening dollar. We need to put this into something that will appreciate and uh, what usually can appreciate? Well, these different hard assets. So here's what the CEO states. He says, it makes sense to shift our treasury assets into some investments that can't be inflated away. Let me read that last part. That can't be inflated away. So that brings me to a little quick a little quick article uh, from uh, July 29th, Pantera Capital. And it talks about two centuries of debt in one month. I'm not going to go through the whole thing, just the first part here. And it says the United States printed more money in June than in the first two centuries after its founding. Last month, the U.S. budget deficit, $864 billion, was larger than the total debt incurred from 1776 through the end of 1979. That's amazing. So, Here's the budget surplus or deficit, not too bad. 1980, when you know it was uh, supposed to be out of control. 95, when well, I went in reverse, not too shabby. And then 2000, 2005, 10, and then the uh, financial crisis. And here's 2020. So congratulations, America, you're number one again. This leads me to my next point, the dollar and its weakening status. So this was on July 29, 2020, and it states the U.S. dollar index has slept, slipped nearly 7% in the last three-month period. In fact, the index that measures the greenback against six of the major currencies is down nearly 9% from its March highs and is on track for its worst month since 2011. So I am not an economist. I don't know exactly what's going to go on, but I can tell you when I look around, I don't see a lot of positives as far as the economy and what's happening with the dollar. Now, do I think that the U.S. dollar will lose its uh, reserve currency status? I don't, but uh, people bigger and smarter than me definitely do. Uh, but it remains to be seen, and uh, we can only find that out uh, as things unravel. But I will say this, it's kind of important to hedge your bets. And that's why I'm into cryptocurrency digital assets, because I believe that at some point we're going to need something other than the U.S. dollar. All fiat uh, in the history of the world has collapsed at one point or another. Do I think uh, 
you know, the dollar is going to collapse tomorrow? No. Uh, but I can see it weakening to a uh, pretty poor status. And that's why I'd like to hold or do hold uh, gold, silver, Bitcoin and different amounts of altcoins because I believe in them and what it's going to happen in the future. Anyhow, let's get back to the article. So MicroStrategy, the company itself, is looking to put half of its $500 million cash reserve into alternative stores of value. Microsoft Strategy President and uh, CFO Fong Lei described the plan. He says, we will seek to invest up to another $250 million over the next 12 months in one or more alternative investments or assets, which may include stocks, bonds, commodities, such as gold, digital assets, such as Bitcoin or other asset types. I like how he said here, digital assets such as Bitcoin, not just saying uh, Bitcoin only. So that leaves it open to a wide swath of interpretation. And I got to tell you, um, I don't see any other way why they wouldn't do digital assets, cryptocurrency, because I mean, they're just one in a handful of investors or institutions that are coming in. I mean, look, we got Fidelity Digital Assets. Uh, they have like seven trillion assets under management. You got TD Ameritrade with one trillion assets under management. You've got Vanek, which were huge gold bugs. And in January of this year, they came out and said, you know what, as good as gold is, uh, Bitcoin's better, and they give you seven different examples for it. And of course, the big guy, uh, Paul Tudor Jones, which apparently is an investment legend in the 80s, early 90s, and he came out and said, look, I'm going to put in 2% of total investments into Bitcoin futures. And when you have these types of big places and big players going, we're going to do this, it opens the door for other investors and institutions to come in and say, you know what, if Paul Tudor Jones is doing it, if Fidelity is doing it, TD Ameritrade, all these guys are doing it, there's something to it. And uh, we like to follow smart money. Anyhow, that's my thoughts on that. Let me know what you think in the comments section. Let's move on to our last juicy piece. Bitcoin set for a bull run that will dust NASDAQ as Ethereum. XRP and all coins face an uphill battle. This is a Bloomberg forecast. And um, I'm not going to go through the article. Uh, it's kind of boring. So what I'm going to do is just give you the highlights of where they got their source material from, which is the Bloomberg Crypto Outlook, which was just released in August. And let's take a listen, or let's take a look. Uh, I will link this in the uh, description so you can take a look of it, look through it thoroughly. It's, it's fascinating. The amount of time that these guys go through all these things and actually look at what's happening now in the past and the future, uh, it's mind blowing. And that's how I, <laughs> I realized that uh, my own shortcomings as far as the, the financial field, because I'm like, wow, I can't do that. So what's going on here? And they state, Bitcoin prudent moving further from speculative digital asset. The potential that Bitcoin will be the primary crypto asset store of value in an increasingly digitalized world is gaining traction. And I got to tell you, when Bitcoin came out, it was all about being a currency, a currency, a currency, a peer-to-peer -peer currency, decentralized. As time has moved on, uh, people have realized it's not going to happen. So, I mean, you may think that's going to happen, and maybe it will. I don't know. Uh, maybe technology will catch up. But right now, it is too slow. It is too expensive. Um, and people can't, uh, across the entire world, uh, that many people, billions of people, uh, can't adopt Bitcoin and make it function well. Now look at 2017. We didn't have that many people, and the darn thing was uh, uh, hit its limits. So as far as a store of value, yes, I definitely see that. And I can see why it is. And I always say that uh, Bitcoin is digital gold. So... Um, you know, this report kind of uh, validates what uh, my thinking was. Later on, it states here, Ethereum pop appears more speculative versus Bitcoin. Ethereum has extended last year's highs and leaped to one of the top performing major crypto assets in 2020. But we view its rally as more speculative versus the favorable demand versus supply conditions supporting Bitcoin. And again, I got to tell you, um, there are some people in this space that say Bitcoin is old and it is worthless, don't invest into it. Just do, just go into altcoins and whatever they talk about. And there's other people who say, you know what? Uh, all the altcoins are just there to steal your money and it's only Bitcoin. And I have a hybrid approach. I think that everybody should own a little bit of Bitcoin because you never know. Nobody is Nostradamus here. No one can predict the future. If you if you can, please leave a comment in the comments section and uh, we'll get in touch. Uh, there's a good, lot of football games coming up. But in reality, no one can really predict. So I always feel like it's best to hedge my bet and put money into Bitcoin and different things like Ethereum, Cardano, Chainlink, Tezos, EOS, VeChain, all the different things that I think are going to do well. And um, so you can take a look at this and go, yeah, this is definitely going to happen or not. 
It just depends on where you think things are going to go. I, I think uh, smart contracts, I think decentralized finance, I think oracles, and I think um, on-chain tracking are going to be big. So that's why I invest in what I invest into. Moving on, it says volatility, Bitcoin gaining upper hand versus gold. And this is pretty interesting because um, we'd always heard about, you know, cryptocurrency is so volatile. But in here, it talks about it's really not that bad. It says the lowest annual volatility level versus gold in about three years favors Bitcoin price appreciation. So I know there's a lot of gold bugs that are very happy right now. Uh, gold is uh, hovering around 2000, which is fantastic. I think it'll hit up to 2300. Who knows? Um, but I believe that the savings account of the future is gold, silver, Bitcoin. Next up, it says Bitcoin and gold correlation on the rise. Though the 0.35 correlation of early August isn't high by normal standards, it's the trend that matters. And we can kind of see these things coupling in together. Do I think that'll be uh, totally in sync? No, I do not. And I do believe that Bitcoin is going to eat into uh, gold's 10.9 trillion dollar market cap i don't see any other way around it if you're, if you're not familiar with this i've talked about this many a time this is the uh, all the money in the world markets and it goes from uh silver well it says each square uh is worth 100 billion so if you're looking at silver uh that's just silver great cryptocurrency here we are that's at 244 billion military spending budget deficit coins and bank the fed's balance sheet which is way higher i believe now uh billionaires they have eight trillion look at these guys $8 trillion between them. Fantastic. Good for them. Uh, gold is at the very high end, or the I guess the low end of the, the shallow pool, $11 trillion. Here's the Fortune 500 companies, which you got uh, Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, Alphabet, and Facebook. The 20% that makes up the S&P 500, there they all are. And they got trillions. Here's the stock market. And they got $89.5 trillion. Here's the entire money supply, $35.2 trillion. Here's global debt, $253 trillion. And here's real estate at 280 trillion but that's not even the big one the big one right here is derivatives at 11.6 trillion and maybe what we really talk about this is the gross market value the national value 558 trillion and then if we're going to go down this is the high end estimate because no one really knows it could be 1.0 quadrillion so when we start talking about like how much bitcoin cryptocurrency digital assets can really break into and eat away at uh, the different markets uh, there's your answer so when we start talking about 1 trillion 2 trillion 10 trillion market cap people are like that's insane it's not insane that's reality we talk about quantitative easing and advancing gold but again this one kind of uh, talks about and affirms my what i was thinking about the more quantitative easing the different problems that we have and people get nervous about it the more gold and bitcoin will go up uh, lastly it states mainstream bitcoin adoption something needs to go wrong to end mainstream bitcoin adoption see years ago it wasn't like this uh years ago it was uh you know Bitcoin could just go away because I mean who's gonna use it? it doesn't make any sense and people aren't adopting it but right now we're at that critical point where and, and it's not even now it's it's, it's already passed there's no way that Bitcoin's gonna go away and go to zero that's ridiculous so when it talks about something needs to massively go wrong to main, mainstream adoption they are really laying it out there and being the truth and they state relative scarcity of the benchmark digital asset needs adoption as the primary price outlook metric and the indicators we track remain clearly positive especially with the amount of scarcity that bitcoin has because it only has 21 million so what are you going to do and then to finish up it does say bitcoin addresses point towards 14,000. they say this is in the short term and it states here one of the most robust on-chain indicators of Bitcoin adoption, which is addresses used, suggests a price or close to 14,000 versus about 11,000 on August 4th. So um, if you're looking at the uh, short term, we could be seeing some fireworks, but who knows? And then lastly, it states Bitcoin 10,000 breach set to dust the NASDAQ. So fundamentally bullish and breaking above the key 10,000 resistance, Bitcoin has a solid foundation on the back of a steep correction and period of disdain. All-time highs in the index in July and the most extreme stretch above its 50-week mean in over a decade may indicate stock market buoyancy limits from quantitative easing, which more directly supports the price of quasi-currency stores of value. So I will link this in the uh, description of the video. It's very, it's very uh, in-depth, but those are the main points. And here's what I think. Uh, in the very end of the day, it's good if Bitcoin goes up because everything else goes up. When the water when the water rushes into the harbor, which is the you know the Bitcoin wave, all the boats all the boats go up, all the altcoins, and I'm uh, I'm ready for that. So hopefully that uh, happens. All right, let's give away some money, huh? So 
Unstoppable Domains, uh, I partnered up with them. They reached out to me and said, hey, we'd like to give your subscribers some money. And I was like, sure, I'm sure they'd like to do that. So in today's economy, who doesn't want 100 bucks? So here's how it goes. All you got to do is just make a comment of uh, ETH to 10K. Now let's do this. Tomato coin to 10K. Today is going to be tomato coin to 10K. Just, just say tomato coin to 10K and put in your uh, unstoppable domain dot crypto in the comments section. So uh, first of all, why is this important or why is unstoppable domains uh, important? So this is how I see it. There's two things. And I'm not going to beat a dead horse. We talked about this yesterday. But uh, back in the early 90s, when the when the uh, Internet was coming around, when I was around, uh, well, still around, uh, people would buy up domains like it was going out of style. They'd buy up, you know, streetwalk.com. They'd buy up uh, johnsmith.com. They'd buy up casper.com or whatever they, they'd buy because they knew at some point businesses were going to need those domains. Businesses didn't really understand it, but some people did. And they snatched up a ton of them. So then later on, and my prime example is casper.com. Somebody bought casper.com like eight years ago, nine years ago, and then they sold it to the uh, betting company for like millions. So imagine spend like 20 bucks on a domain at like GoDaddy, and then later on they're like, "Hey, we need that for like two million. Sure, I'll sell it." So the same thing's kind of going on with Unstoppable Domains. Their domains are .dot crypto. So like for me, I bought my own domain, which is DanLikes.crypto, crypto, and that's all I use. So what's awesome like that is that I can use that as a domain, and I can also use that as a payment. So what's great, what they just announced a couple days ago is that uh, Coinbase is allowing, instead of using these long, like we talked about before, these, these long public addresses for your Bitcoin, for your Ethereum, for your XRP, for whatever cryptocurrency that you have, you can just use danlikes.crypto. And you can use that uh, for payment. So if someone says, hey, uh, pay me, you know, in, uh, I don't know, tomato coin, and uh, send it to danlikes.crypto. Then that's all I got to do. So like in Coinbase, so I'm going to show you yesterday's winner, matter of fact. So yesterday's winner was uh, David. Well, this is them. This is Unstoppable Domains actually paying David Herbert. David Herbert.crypto. He just put it in the description, said ETH at 10K, which today is going to be 10, tomato coin at 10K, and 100 bucks to him just for doing that. And that's how easy it is. So imagine like, Instead of putting in this long, super long uh, public address for all these different ones, you could just put in one, which would be David Herbert uh, Crypto. And that's it, and you're and that and that's all you got to do. So when you sign up for Unstoppable Domains, you know you, you get your domain, fantastic. You click on the hamburger or the menu, whatever you want to call it, and you go to where is it? My domains. So I already bought my domain. There's Crypto. I'm going to click on Manage. And here's all my cryptocurrency address. I need to add in a Bitcoin, a Zillica, a Litecoin, all that stuff. And I can select an additional one. So see like how I have my Ethereum address here. You need to to do to win the hundred dollars. You have to have a uh, Unstoppable Domains domain like a dot crypto, Dan Likes dot crypto, Tomato Coin dot crypto, Joe Blow dot crypto, whatever, Potato Foot dot crypto. So you just put that. Um, you find your Ethereum address to wherever it is, and you can put a bunch of them in here. And also, you uh, you can put any any cryptocurrency in there. You can have a ton of them, right? That is your essentially your wallet for everything. So instead of sending somebody like here, pay me in Bitcoin. Here's my Bitcoin address. Here, pay me in Ethereum. Here's my Ethereum address. They can pay you whatever they want. They can pay you in Zillica, and it'll go to your Zillica wallet. They can pay you in Bitcoin, and it'll go to your Bitcoin wallet. So that's the big thing. If you have any questions about that, in the description of the video, it's going to say set up your domain and it's it's uh, just unstoppabledomains.com forward slash features and just follow the the steps right there. It'll show you how to you know purchase the domain, uh, to set up your, your wallet if you need more uh, information and it kind of is pretty smooth. So right now this works at Coinbase and Huobi. You can just put in you know danlikes.crypto and send whatever. Uh, but it also works with a lot of different very popular wallets like my Ether wallet, Atomic wallet, and a bunch of other so just so you understand that's how it all is so put in there uh, tomato coin to 10k and uh, uh, Zaji will uh, from unstoppable domains will actually pick the winner and I'll announce it manana all right that's it for today so uh, thanks for sticking with me and that's a little bit longer but uh, a, lot of, a lot of good stuff out there so just so you know uh, I always want to say give like random shout outs to all my subscribers or to all the people who have joined up and uh, there's a join now button underneath it doesn't give you anything special nothing special like a tip like a buck 99 if you want to do that sure great and these are all the people that do it I appreciate them all so like uh, Shout out to the new ones, Bill Austin, Asui, Vasant Bun. I'm sure I crushed that one. Mark, Jess Zadra, who else we got? Uh, Stephen Hewlett, Shauna's Life. That's a good one. Uh, Igor Pust, 
Hudson, Sam Rossman, <laughs> WineWomenWages.org, bam, David, and uh, uh, my man Medic. Uh, medics there. So um, yeah, thanks a lot. I really appreciate it. Now, if you like these types of videos, gonna be two more that's gonna pop up on your left and right. I don't know because YouTube has total control of that. I don't control any of that stuff. Just like any kind of scam um, ads that you saw before, during, and after this video, I have no control of that. YouTube handles all that. So complain to them. And uh, that's it. So check out those videos and uh, see you on the next one.